Thanks, Brian. A lot of opportunities to gain and lose points today here in Laguna Seca. The number nine FAF Motorsports Porsche behind me, they're sitting right now in the third position in points, 124 out of the lead, but they're rolling off in the fifth spot. They're going to use this day to try and capitalize, close on that points gap. They've made minimal adjustments and they feel good about the opportunity. But on the other hand, the number five of, or I'm sorry, the number one of Paul Miller Motorsports, well, they've got a little bit of a different plan. They've made huge changes all afternoon long, not quite sure what kind of car they have underneath them. And even though they're only 124 points out, they are no longer points racing. All they want to do is end up with their first win of the season here at Laguna Seca. So Dave, while some may not count them out of the GTD Points <laughs> Championship, they're after a podium this afternoon. Well, I think you heard it from Austin Dillon. Uh, there's a lot of guys that just simply don't have this racetrack figured out. It's going to bring up the frustration. And we're at the tail end of what you could call the short track swing. We went dirt racing at Bristol. We went to Martinsville. There's animosity that's carried over from both of those. And we're going to let them all duke it out one more time on the short track at Richmond. Yeah, it's a lot nicer here on my boots. Of course, I had my tennis shoes and went and found these boots a little bit earlier. But you can see here just the difference in the racetrack service. I mean, they've got it completely packed down. You can't even pull any of this up. It's almost, almost like clay to where you can pick it up and pull it in a ball here and ball it up. I mean, they've got the perfect amount of moisture in this. And that, like we said, that creates grip. So there's going to be a ton of grip. These guys are going to find it all over the racetrack. Ooh, and there's our three wide scenario. Can on the outside, Valento on the bottom. Fryer all the way to the bottom. We're making it work thus far. Fryer clears Valento. McCaskill giving it everything he has, not quite enough down the back stretch. The laps are running out. He'll try and set him up down near the front stretch. Little nudge through the front stretch. This could be what he needs. Yeah, and one of the things that I found so interesting that sets Imsa apart is obviously these two drivers need to come to a common comparison or a, a middle ground on how they want these cars to drive. Right now, you've got Lawrence Van Tour in the car, but Zachary Robinson, uh, Robichon, when I talked to him earlier in the day, he said they were having a really hard time finding that middle ground here at Laguna Seca. Robichon didn't really like as much oversteer. Vantour was just adamant that they was able to drive it that way, so they made the decision that Vantour would be the one to close it, have the longer stint, and that would allow Robichon to basically hold on to the car at the beginning of the race for as long as possible. So they were obviously able to find that common ground, which has been interesting to watch at the tail end of this race. It's the heartbreak story of the evening, the guy that the crowd went wild for when you took the lead, Matt Benedetto. I think that says it all right there, you guys. You can hear the crowd right now roaring for him. I think you had everyone here on your side. You had everyone on social media on your side. What are the emotions with such a close run there in light of everything's news? And man, that race was exciting to watch in the TCRs. Mark Wilkins finished it off here. Was that a move that you had up your sleeve or was that just an opportunity to capitalize to get the win done? You know, um, our car was fantastic. You found Victory Lane more than once here on this Northern Tour. I know everyone was looking forward to it. Is it something about these racetracks here on this Northern Swing that really just works with you? Or have you guys really just re-hit this stride over here at Rocket Machine? And we look forward to watching him race both those races. But if you weren't able to join us, it was three playoff races that led us to tonight for the season finale. We narrowed the field down to four championship contenders. So let's take a look at how we got here. Something that you mentioned there, yes, we have gotten so far in brake technology, but something that differentiates with late model racing and some of the upper divisions of NASCAR is the ability to choose your manufacturers and who you want to run your brakes. And there's a lot of flexibility in how these teams are able to do that. So it could be a difference of manufacturers of each of these brakes on these teams, or it could just be a matter of handling with these cars. An exciting race it was. One of the most consistent drivers with our tour. Really quick, take a look here at this damage. He mentioned it. He's got the whole right fender pulled off. The whole back end is also crumpled up. So uh, there's definitely some signs of war that took place on Brandon Shepard's car. Go. Yeah, we definitely saw a change in the racetrack very quickly throughout qualifying. Originally, a lot of the guys were trying to run that top groove, especially coming off of four. But you kind of saw them realize that that wasn't really the place to be. They slowly inched their exit off of four. Ultimately, the track just slowed down a lot. Hey, race fans, it's race weekend here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and we're here in the NASCAR Home Tracks Hub with lots of cool stuff going on. Come out here, check us out in the fan zone. We're giving away a lot of cool stuff, including stickers, tattoos, koozies. We've even got some cool bags on tap. Also, try your hand at NASCAR Heat here on our gaming consoles. Find out who's the best NASCAR driver out of your friend group.